my little valley. And the boys. We're in a section of Butts Creek here south of Pope Valley, California. One of the only real sections where you can get down to it because it's uh, got a flower preserve in the front, allows you public access. And it runs deep into some private ranches and private land beyond this. Lots of uh, beautiful churches and quartz mixes. Fairy castles that me and Olive built. Sunset going down. And the dogs. The dogs are here somewhere. And I'm here. Here he is, Indigo. We're shooting footage on the phone. See, see what it looks like in this medium because I'm always using uh, two other different cameras, a GoPro and then a Handycam. Oh, this creek, we just recently discovered some of the greenest bowernite that I've seen in a wall, anywhere. And the water's flowing in it. This is the story with most of my part of California. Is there's a little water, which is better than none, because it was none for a while. Let's see what the dogs are up to. This is actually the confluence of Butts Creek and then another creek that comes in out of Snow Valley and join up here. So some people don't realize if you go up and over the rise here, there's a whole other creek. So we'll go look at what those gravels look like. There's the other channel here, and they join up kind of beyond the point here. Got one creek and the other creek coming together. And it's still ranch land out here, which is rare. California's very developed out. No houses and no grapes, so you get a kind of sense of the meadowland that used to be everywhere. Go look at that gravel patch. And that right there looks like another big old gob of bowenite. It's kind of got that blue green, but there's a lot of them in this creek. Ooh. All the different shades, now that I've realized it comes in different different shades, I'm looking for them. I really like the lighter nephrite tones. Dog beat us there. He's an outdoorsman now. He ran through miles and miles and miles of this stuff. Oh. Yeah, look at the different colors. I'll slow down. Look at the pinks. This is mixes of quartz all swirled together. This had uh, massive amounts of lava from the Cobb Volcanic Zone, which is nearby. Literally, there are lava flows that cap this whole area off that are surrounding us. It makes that ledge rock look that surrounds the whole area. So a lot of heat and a lot of change and a lot of silicates to start with. A thousand shades of quartz. Some real pure, just massive quartz. And then bits and bobs of every color. And the chert here is just absolutely swirled and boiled and yeah. It was ocean a long time ago and it's gone through rust and volcanism and all kinds of things.
Look, Moore's got everything wet for us. Very bubbly, bubbly stuff. And more pure, you can see this is a slab of ribbon shirt. You can see the fine clay that kind of forms between the layers and makes the layers of ribbon shirt. And the purity of it. Somebody collected a bunch of white quartz and left them there. Undoubtedly, because they found something even cooler. We're having enough of that already, but can't resist collecting it. Ooh. Look at the green green of that. Wow. Not bad, not bad. That's going in the pocket. It's a type of leafy serpentine, not a bowenite. But uh, kind of like the veneer layers that are in it. Almost nephritic. Take that home and look at it closer for sure. Give you a scan of the ground. All the different colors. I've been told sometimes I don't give enough time to look at rocks and then sometimes I feel like I'm boring you. But then when I'm watching other rock hunting videos, oh, I always want to look at everything more and more and more. So, try and strike that balance. Ooh, see there's a piece of bonite right there. It's small. You can just tell. The granulization of its surface. It's kind of been beaten on by the water and there are the rocks around it. What are you guys doing? You're being wild and crazy. He's exploring in all the literal spots, huh? Oh. That's what I mean. Nothing stops Mars. There's another gob. Pretty sure. I give each one of these a little slice on the corner, put a flashlight through it, and then they go into the stockpile. Oh, I know it's just quartz, but... Can't quit picking it up. I've lined all the walkways of my house with this stuff. Like a big electroconductor. Go see what the dogs were looking at here. Oh, a big pool. Yeah. And the fires have been through here, of course. And this is the aftermath. But green stuff sprouting up through it. Uh, uh, yeah. You! Thanks for taking a walk with us. Just kind of felt like sharing it with you. Look at some rocks. Look at the world. These are the short days. And, uh, this is where I'm up to, at least for this part of today. Spent a lot today hiding inside and I'll probably go back to that, so don't feel bad if you are too. <sighs> Old mercury mines up there, and caves. There's still a lot of things I want to show you. Please stick around. Absolute maniac is what you are. You too. <laughs> what do you think about that? Kind of wild? Kind of wild. Definitely a stripe of green going through there. Look at the swirls. 
That's nice. For sure. Yeah, this was just bone dry for way too many months. You got something in your ear? Let me look. You hound. Floppy ear hound. Let me look. So what elder looks like at this time of year? It's the end of December in California here. And it started to, or kept its little green tufts maybe because it's down here in all this warm veg. But it'll fully explode out into a big green tree and then have its berries. And this is just a winter form. This is one of the best fire rods for fire starting. It's got a nice uh, foamy pith to it and then a hard outside that gets smoking really quick for doing friction fires. Not to mention being one of the greatest medicine plants that there is. Right next to that, of course, is the Herba Santa. Another medicine plant. It's some of the stuff that's left green this time of year up here is the more hardy medicines. Giant tar weeds that stuck up out of the. You can still tell it's a tar weed by the stickiness. Big boiled up chunks of shirt here. Still given away by its light tones of the greens and then the layering that it is. You can tell it's a sediment creature. Just distorted almost beyond recognition. veins of quartz running through here. Lots of signs of gold mines in these parts, although everything gets directed out of the coastal range of California into the Sierras as far as gold country, but makes me wonder if they didn't get here first early on because we're closer to the San Francisco Bay and then got distracted by the bigger loads out there. Remember that we are only about 25 miles as the crow flies from California's largest deposit of gold ever, the Homestay Claim, which is actually here in the coastal range. A little woolly sunflower. That's how tall he got this year. It had little yellow sunflowers on it. Back down to that little statue there. You guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. You're crazy. Jeez, this is where you have to take them for walks. Ooh. Yeah. Look at the purity of that shirt. Not only the color. Look at the color of that. But the purity too. This did not get metamorphosized. This is just sediment. You can almost see where it was mud and it split apart. Salacious ooze from the depths of the ocean. Remember, this comes from the deep, deep. If it's shallower, it falls down and becomes chalk and limestones. It has to be in the deep, deep where the water becomes so acidic out in the depths of the ocean that it dissolves all the little microorganisms' bodies to just the silicate is left. That's where you get the chert. That green is from the deep of the ocean. Ooh. 
Another little green nugget. Loving that shirt. Look, this is with no light too. Literally, the sun has gone down. This little guy wants to climb up inside my sweater. That's what he keeps saying. Thin slabs of the same. Guess my eyes and my brain have started kind of hunting the green shirt out of here. I told myself, we're not hunting bow night tonight. And here I am. Okay, what else is green? That's just the way that you like what you like. These guys, I'm telling you. But you can see just a wide array of, of colors here. It's not the gemmiest creek, although, you know, I have found, like I said, the most purest green bonite in this water system anywhere. And, uh, but it does have a huge mineral supply, different minerals, really metamorphosized stuff. So. I've seen uh, geology classes from the college nearby come down into these parts and look around because it's uh, so diverse and there's so many examples right on hand. Okay, well, I think we're going to go back soon in. Soon for the evening here. Um, it's made it down through all my layers. It's getting down to 22 degrees every night. So I went and got a bunch of firewood and we're all stocked up. And this guy likes to lay there and pant for like three hours and you can't move him away from it. He's ridiculous, but uh, yeah, he's probably making up for it. No more cold this winter. And this little guy is already a desert dweller. So he spends most of his time trying to be warm and, and get in with people. So. Thank you for joining me on this little quest. A little rock hounding wander here. Evening dog walk. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Whatever you do or don't do. Hope that you're safe. Staying healthy in your head. And uh, trying to get the details in whenever you can. That's what we're doing here. I hope to see you next time if you're joining me. Until then, please take care of yourselves. And if you get the chance, take care of each other. Quest on. Came down to the section of Pewter Creek where we have been rock hunting in the last few trips with the hover bucket. This is what it looks like now. This is where we drive down and park, go down the dry boat ramps. That's why this place is called a marina. When it's full, you can actually take your boats and stuff out to Lake Berryessa, which is about a mile down. This is the, actually the river, the main river that fills it in. This is what it looks like. So it's full, it, it fills all the way up to the top of those banks, comes all the way across to where I am. 
And in the old years before, uh, we've always had droughts in California. I've never, never known a period of time when we didn't have reoccurring droughts out here. That's why they built all the reservoirs about, oh, 80 years ago now. Um, all of the reservoirs where our populations have increased. So even when this fills all the way up and the lake is all the way full and spilling over its uh, glory holes and stuff, um, this still drains out pretty quick because there's so much usage downstream. Our populations have swollen and swollen. So hardly ever does it sit here. This was uh, the boat ramp that would have been here in the, uh, oh, probably the 80s. And then this one is one that gets used when it's high and then down there in the trees where it goes even lower is uh, the last resort boat ramp and then usually it's just a channel by the end of summer traveling along there and there's the stumps of the old trees that are still sticking out sometimes and um, you know that just shows it hasn't been long enough uh, for them to rot off since this was just a river coming through here and it was only flooded in the, the 1950s and beyond after the dams were finished So it's been a quick cycle of um, Of getting everything built and having enough water and these reservoirs all looking super tall and full and then having the population Swell and swell and then every time that you have one of the El Nino La Nina cycles come through and it, it gets dry for the El Nino part um, you end up with, with really low levels and a bunch of people drinking out of the same bucket with multiple straws and it goes down very quick, shockingly quick, especially if you haven't been here for a very long time watching the whole thing, so. But yeah, that's the craziness of this, is we were just out walking all through this. You can see the grasses and stuff down here. Those are two inches underwater and then the gravel beds over to where the channel is. So no rock hounding here for a few days. Yeah, we'll let the water go down. The, it'll be silty and the rain will wash off all the rocks. Thought it was going to be the perfect day. We missed the perfect day about four days ago, I think, when everything was wet but not flooded yet. It just comes right up out of a three-foot bed and comes across. But every creek leading into this and all through this area is tearing itself up and churning and burning and... Um, swishing all the gravels around so everybody that gets out of their car and looks for any gravels in this whole part of the state of California in the coming months will be looking at fresh gravels so um, happy new year <laughs>